Stop where you are. Death's hand should know better than to send his minions out alone. It is clear that you are one of his hirelings, or perhaps one of Gao the Greater's marauding pirates. You will pay for the crimes you have committed. Don't waste your last breath on lies. I didn't get there in time to help anyone, but I saw you lead the massacre in two rivers. Clearly you were involved. Death's hand went too far in ordering its destruction, and Gao the Greater sought to profit from it. My retribution will end with them, but it will begin with you. The way you move seems odd. A flaw I cannot see, perhaps? But you are better than I expected. You might even beat me, if I allowed such insolence. You are too skilled to be just a hireling. Death's Hand would view such ability outside his assassins as dangerous. And Gao the Greater prefers her servants docile. So it would appear. You lack their branding. But if you are not one of them, who are you? A monk? A mercenary? A bandit? You chase a great evil, larger than you realize. Leave and you may survive. Others have tried to face Death's Hand, but were destroyed, as Two Rivers was. Your honor sends you toward peril, but you do not flinch from it. A trait of fools, and perhaps the occasional hero. I also seek answers from Death's Hand and his minions. If you truly oppose him, you will need to find your way to the Imperial City. Of course, only the Lotus Assassins can come and go as they please, thanks to Gao. Travel routes by land and water are blocked, but they use wind maps and flyers to further their goals here and in the surrounding forest. Perhaps, if you are capable, we will meet again. I wish you good luck, but you will need far more than that to survive. Farewell. You may call me Silk Fox. I apologize for my previous aggression, but I thought you were in league with an enemy of mine. I was clearly mistaken. Powerful forces are at work here. You are caught in great events that are beyond you. But I may have use for someone as impetuous as you. Trust? I never said we should trust each other. I don't trust you at all, but our goals may be similar. I want nothing more than for you to continue your journey. You seek the old man who was taken from Two Rivers, correct? Of course you do. He was taken by Death's Hand. I could tell you where his minions have gone. For a price. A simple trade. I tell you where the abductors are, and you tell me who that old man is. Sun Li! Ha! You think me a fool? You are either a liar or very, very confused. The glorious strategist has been dead for 20 years. Everyone knows this. You mean to confuse me, but I am not a willing fool. I will let you maintain this deception for now, just to see where it leads. But we share an enemy in Death's Hand. For that reason, I will help you. It would take a season to reach the Imperial City by land or water. Air is the only quick way, but you need a wind map. I know the location of one. Lord Yun governs much of the Great Southern Forest. He petitioned the Lotus Assassins for a wind map so he could settle a trade disruption. Of course, that has earned him their attention in addition to whatever trouble is infesting his lands. I doubt he has time for charity, but you might try to find him. I have matters of my own to attend. If you survive, we will see what use you are to me. Remember, if you want to reach the Imperial City, you must go to the forest and get that map from Lord Yun. My path takes me elsewhere. If you actually reach the Imperial City, I will be impressed. Until then, I wish you luck. You are a surprising little peasant. Identify yourself. By order of the Emperor and the Lotus Assassins, state your name and purpose for being in the Imperial City.
We are questioning everyone who has arrived in the city recently. You bear a resemblance to someone we are looking for. I don't know. He is tattooed in a similar way. The clothes could be the same. It's not enough to be sure. Hmm. We could hold him anyway. It's not a good match, but the Lotus Assassins would leave us be for a few days while they question him. Is there a problem here, Captain? Well, is there... No, Princess Leanne. We were questioning this traveler by order of the Lotus Assassins. There is no need to pursue this questioning any further. You may go. My apologies, Princess, but I was ordered to detain anyone even vaguely matching. Captain, this man is here on a personal matter of mine that does not concern you. Do I make myself clear? Y yes, Princess Leanne. Then unless you wish to be transferred to the Wall, you will leave and continue your search. Well, we meet again. I've watched your progress. It seems I underestimated you in Tian's Landing. I have no doubt that you will make as much of an impact on the Imperial City. No guys, I assure you. You have the honor of addressing Princess Lian, the Heavenly Lily. It is, as you can see, customary to bow in my presence. Your explanation lies in the simple bow you have given. Everyone around me kowtows low, obeying my whims. Honest opinion is rare. That is why I often travel without official escort, and occasionally present myself as someone less bridled by the rules of the court. You understand why I don't go into detail here in the street, don't you? With what I have to tell you, I don't want to lose that option of disguise. Not here. I trust my personal assistants to keep their tongues, but this matter is best discussed in private. I will not speak the location aloud. Take this note. We will meet nearby. But I must have a moment to acquire more fitting attire. <laughs> that is quite enough. We will continue this at a later time. We both have questions that we will need answered. I'm certain that my entourage would prefer that this take place in private. Your gruff nature is a bit too much for them. I'm sure they are heartfelt. Get up, you lot. I'll be embarrassed for myself, thank you. Save your false modesty for my father's court. Don't be too long. My message concerns your master, and time is very important. It would not have been proper for her to award it to you herself, but Princess Sun Lian requests that you accept this gift. She looks forward to your next meeting. I didn't expect you in your strange training to make it to the Imperial City. You are proving to be a very interesting person. Of course, I could tell that just by looking at you. You have a very strong presence. As the Heavenly Lily, I am above suspicion, but I am restrained by fawning servants. Silk Fox can go anywhere, and people are not shy about their reactions. There is a thrill, of course, and it allows me to find information useful to us both. Death's Hand brought your master Lee to the palace a few days ago. I saw the flyer. He was bound in chains. He must be powerful, but I still don't believe he is Sun Lee, the glorious strategist. Sun Li died 20 years ago. Everyone was told that he and Prince Kin, the third brother, fell defending the Empire. Now, it seems they may have been traitors. I discovered this looking through records for information on Death's Hand. Perhaps he tried to influence Sun Li and Sun Kin before corrupting my father. But it doesn't matter who your master is. I could take you to the palace, but Death's Hand controls what my father hears. He must be discredited for you to succeed.
Death's Hand has almost total control over my father. We must find conclusive evidence of his crimes and reveal his corruption. And I know how. Construction on the wall has stopped for the first time in generations. The workers now toil in factories building powerful creatures of stone and clay called golems. Death's Hand could use these automatons to seize the Empire, and my father is oblivious. We must infiltrate the Lotus Assassins and find evidence of this treachery. We need proof of Death's Hand's intent from the seat of his power, the Lotus Assassin Fortress. It would be impossible to assault, so just walk in. They are rec Have any Lotus Assassins who saw your face live to report back? I doubt it. They will not recognize you as the person who fought them in Tien's Landing. They have a vague description full of guesswork that has guards holding people at random. Besides, they expect an attack, not someone trying to catch their eye. I would wager that you may profit from their tasks too. Can you see the beauty in using their own methods of recruitment to fight them? I think they deserve it. There are guilds within the Lotus Assassins. Executioners look for fearsome warriors. Inquisitors are more subversive and they look for cunning in their agents. If you prove yourself in the arena, they will notice you. My people can spread rumors of your interest. The Executioner will take a real interest when you finish the Silver Round. Or if you prefer, the Inquisitor Recruiter is also seeking new people. He might be open to persuasion. Death's Hand rules over the Lotus Assassins, so I take special interest in their activities. I've had most of my life to ask questions. You suspect my motives? You have no reason to doubt me. If I wanted the Lotus Assassins to find you, I could simply tell them your name. Yes, I will have my people spread rumors of your interest. Once you pass the Silver Round, the Executioner will take an interest. I'm sure he will find you as impressive as I do. Or, if you prefer, court the Inquisitor. Ask scholar Don Gao in the Scholar's Garden about him. I hear Don Gao is closer to the Assassins than he should be. I will wait at your flyer. Or I could travel with you. Before you get too lost, perhaps we should, uh, discuss how closely we will be working together? A wise preference. No offense intended to your amusing companions. Oh, again, I enjoy our little chats, but I don't think anything has changed since we last spoke. I still need evidence against Death's Hand to free my father. Meet the Executioner in the arena, or speak with Scholar Dung Gao in the Scholar's Garden about the Inquisitor. Hurry, or you'll lose your chance to help your master. Did you like it? I thought you might want a little assistance. Consider it a small token of my favor. I thank you for your courtesy. A woman always likes to hear when her gifts are appreciated. It is difficult for one of my rank to give gifts, even one so simple as what I gave you. A princess is not normally allowed to show favorites. Better that I give it away before Death's Hand carts it off. He has been quite brazen. Besides, it was mine by birthright to do with as I wish. Must I always be dictated to by tradition, despite my respect for it? Sometimes I want what everyone else has, to be myself. And to be myself, I gave you what I wished. Hmm. Well, you're polite, at least. Most nobles take gifts as a matter of course, especially those from a woman. But the price I may pay for helping you could be greater still. I am destined for the throne, destined to rule the Empire after my father, but... That will be meaningless if Death's Hand keeps his hold on my father's mind. I fear one day he may try to... interfere with the Imperial succession. Or perhaps convince my father that he should be emperor by marriage.
Indeed we cannot. I would bite my own tongue before ever allowing that man to touch me. I'm sorry, I've ruined the mood. We should continue our talk another time. First, we must expose Death's hand, reveal his treachery and manipulation. Yes, I appreciate the attention, but you have things to do. You've made arrangements to gain the trust of the Lotus Assassins, but haven't followed through. The Executioner wants to see you excel in the arena. Progress far enough, and he will gladly recommend that you be recruited. If you prefer, you could still seek out the Inquisitor by speaking with Scholar Dun Gao in the Scholar's Garden. Your progress is admirable, but don't become too close to the Lotus Assassins. Their power is seductive. That is how Death's Hand gained influence over my father. After the disappearance of my uncle, Sun Kin, the Hand of Heaven, the Imperial Order of the Lotus Monks was directionless. Instead of taking on that role himself, my father gave it to an advisor, Death's Hand. I was only a baby at the time. He did not have enough time. The burden of state is heavy and he is not a well man. Death's Hand takes advantage of this. Regardless, the Lotus Monks were placed in the care of Death's Hand, a duty reserved for royalty. It was almost as if my father took Death's Hand into our family. My family! We have been caretakers of the Empire for generations. We have created a bastion of culture in an otherwise uncivilized world. Death's Hand threatens all of this. It is my duty to see that the natural order is preserved. About... about me? But... why? I mean, there's so much I've told you already. I really don't think that we need any more information to complete our mission. Oh. Well... I suppose I could answer a few questions. Although I'm sure more than enough has been said about me by the peasants or others, I am quite used to defending myself from all quarters. Am I really that way? Perhaps I appear to be, but only because I have no other way to fight what is happening. I care deeply about the traditions of this land. It pains me to go against what I try to protect. What other choice do I have? I hope the people speak of other things. How I try to make things right. How very superficial, yet flattering, coming from you. I suppose peasants tend to focus on certain things, given their short and brutish lives. Something to imagine, some perfection to seek. And do you agree with them? Wait, this is further than I thought this conversation would go. This is not proper. I will not allow it. You presume too much. I think we have had quite enough amusement for now. Perhaps, perhaps we will continue this a little later. I have enjoyed our little talk. You must go to the Lotus Assassin Fortress like we agreed. Find the evidence against Death's Hand and I will help you rescue Master Lee. I don't understand. You've gained the favor of the Lotus Assassins with a fair amount of ease. What else is there to speak of? Is there something you are wondering? About me? I am Princess Sun Lian, the Heavenly Lily. What more are you worthy of knowing? Ah, the shadow behind my public self. How else can a curious princess learn what really happens in her domain? I don't have time to interpret the veiled statements of advisors, so I became a thief, an assassin, whatever I needed to be. 
People will not speak to the princess. Bad news kills the messenger first. Silk Fox knows how to persuade. That is how I learned about the activities of Death's Hand. There is a freedom in it. I have the resources to go anywhere in the secrecy to do anything. If I wished it, I could be quite carefree. But that is not what I have found in practice. Instead, I see how my father's reign has twisted, and I know I must do something. You announce your questions like a wild animal with no warning of the claws you unleash. Proceed slowly, lest you turn me away. I do not remember ever being allowed to just be a child. My mother died when I was born, shortly before the end of the long drought and the fall of my uncles. I was in the care of tutors too afraid to punish me and too ingratiating to teach me anything useful. I quickly found ways to sneak away from the palace. They dared not report my excursions for fear they would be punished. They would scurry around all day trying in vain to find me. Yes, it was. I didn't fully understand the risk and made some mistakes. But in the end, what I have become is a result of that. In the city, I met the people. The peasants, the homeless, the thieves. It was a much different world from what you see from the palace. They never realized who I was. I'm sure they would have been terrified of the army storming in to rescue me. Most just wanted to be left alone. That life was exciting, but also useful. Even Lotus assassins overlook the beggar on the street, but she still has eyes and ears. I do not remember ever being allowed to just be a child. My mother died when I was born, shortly before the end of the long drought and the fall of my uncles. I was in the care of tutors too afraid to punish me and too ingratiating to teach me anything useful. I quickly found ways to sneak away from the palace. They dared not report my excursions for fear they would be punished. They would scurry around all day trying in vain to find me. Yes, it was. I didn't fully understand the risk and made some mistakes. But in the end, what I have become is a result of that. In the city, I met the people. The peasants, the homeless, the thieves, it was a much different world from what you see from the palace. They never realized who I was. I'm sure they would have been terrified of the army storming in to rescue me. Most just wanted to be left alone. That life was exciting, but also useful. Even Lotus assassins overlook the beggar on the street, but she still has eyes and ears. That's better. I like that you listen, although your request is still very improper, unless you make me a little more comfortable. I have already shared something of myself. Can you tell me something about you? Is there anyone that you care for? A noble, how romantic, aloof, separate by class and breeding, unattainable for a peasant, normally. Wanting someone you can never have, love you can never show in public, such loneliness should not exist. I have contributed to that. The princess behaves as she should, reinforcing the very rules I despise, all to protect Silk Fox. Which one am I? I should not be ungrateful. Everything in my life is dedicated solely to making me happy, but I am at odds with so much. I am always behind a mask, not just when I am Silk Fox. I am not allowed to show an interest in politics, defending the Empire, or even spontaneous affection. You were amusing at first, but now I am drawn further than I meant to be. What do you suppose I should do about that?
I have tried to make a place for myself. It was difficult, but I have succeeded, despite Death's Hand or my father or what people think. The Jade Empire has had strong female leaders before. Most met with unfortunate ends. At critical junctures, they were abandoned. Whatever I decide about the Empire or about you, can I count on you to be here? You asked me about my first love. It was the Empire and its people. There might be room for another, given time and effort. I don't think I will shatter any grand conventions of the Empire by courting outside the list of pockmarked nephews of statesmen. You and I will have much to discuss after we have restored my father. I am looking forward to it. Wait! Before we go any further, I think we need to talk about a few things. I agree. What is that child doing here? Can she not spare us a moment's peace from her prattle? I thought we should talk before... Well, this could be very dangerous. Both of us, I wonder? You cheapen the importance of this princess. He could die in there. I am unaccustomed to admissions of this kind, but the situation demands no less. I want proof of Death's Hand's misdeeds, but there is more at stake. You must be very careful. If they learn your identity, you will face the whole fortress. As strong as you are, I don't think you would live to discredit Death's Hand. I don't want to lose you in a place like this. You could die here, and I wanted to say I would find that very unfortunate. Princess, no. You pretend about too much to be genuine in this. Honest affection comes from years of growth. Even if it was only recently discovered. It does. Of course it does. I never had a doubt. I have asked a great deal from you, but I know you can provide more than I need. Well, far be it for me to get in the way of what a princess needs. Whatever it is, I'm sure it is far more important than what the... the rest of us want. I think we are done here. I trust you will be careful as you progress from here. You must expose Death's hand and save your master. And when all this is done, we can deal with more pleasant concerns. I thank you, but this has been a great deal to absorb. I don't know what to think about anything. We still have much to talk about, but it will have to wait. I must speak to my father. Forgive me. Hurry up, I need... I doubt he'll take this intrusion kindly, especially not with... with the information we've learned. I... I don't know what my father has done, or what his reaction will be, but I want you to know something. I care for you, and I want to explore what we mean to each other in more... intimate surroundings. We have to face my father and find out what has happened, what he has done. If we still can, afterwards, let's find out what we truly mean to each other. If you are lucky, I'll use them to bind you. Enough of this for now. The Emperor awaits. I can only hope that my father has been the victim in this. I pray he has the answers I seek. The fate of the Empire depends on it. Star guided us to this place, but I expected a ghost, not flesh and blood. You... I... 
You couldn't have. My surprise is tempered by knowing that spouses and companions will follow beyond reason. Far, far beyond. Unohir kukta ir tanir ukkum aso. Sihir sukut afifir noni. Such creatures are not accustomed to needing assistance or being called on to assist. Both circumstances would likely annoy them. As annoyances go, I think ours is more pressing. Or have you all forgotten the entire army of the Aberrant? Mo yo wir apafui ir sir sisitsu toir ok pir okir ifui. Your former master, my uncle, has taken the Jade Empire as his own. Emperor Sun Li has set the whole of his forces against us, and we are trapped here in Dirge. After you defeated my... my father, and Li struck you down, he claimed both your amulet and the heart of the Water Dragon and announced that his rule had begun. The Lotus Assassins were his almost immediately. Your amulet must have allowed him to quickly do what it took my father years to accomplish. We had no choice but to flee. In the days after, the new Emperor did not seem overly concerned with capturing us, and we did not know where to go. He didn't consider us a threat. We had no way of fighting him. Just as with Sun Hai, only a spirit monk can face him with hope of success. That's why we came here. Dawnstar's vision seemed impossible, but any hope was better than none. Unfortunately, Emperor Sun Li sensed your stirrings in the spirit realm as well, and now we are trapped. Only one path is passable by foot, and that is the route they are coming up. We cannot sneak past such a horde. My marvelous dragonfly will not survive the passage either. The winds force a certain path, and the army's flyers are guarding it well. But that is our luck, as well as our sorrow. Their inferior flyers can barely stay aloft in such currents. They will not overrun us from the air, at least not in numbers. We have a little time. They are still at the base of the mountain. I'd say the main force won't be here until tomorrow. We will start securing the temple. The great gates of this place will grant us some valuable time. At least they will not take us by surprise. Fortifications? Hmm. Perhaps I will remove some of the ordnance from the marvelous dragonfly. Properly applied, it may prove useful tomorrow. Come, whirlwind. I need your muscle. That's the Black Whirlwind. And as long as it makes the coming fight more interesting, I'll lift whatever you want. That is all we can do for now. Tomorrow we'll decide our fates. We should all get some rest. But if I could have a word with you when the others have gone, I need to speak with you. I was wondering when we'd find time to be alone. Everyone has been hovering about you since you got back. I have been afraid to talk to you. I worry that you might have changed, that you might have forgotten me. Do you still feel the same way for your heavenly lily? I haven't slept since you fell. For all the influence my position is supposed to carry, I was as helpless as a lamb. But now, to have you back here, with me, it's almost too much to bear. I wish that saying it would make it true, but there is so much that is uncertain. I... I am truly frightened about tomorrow, but I know I am safe, here, in your arms. Whatever comes tomorrow, thank you for what we have, right now. This moment is beautiful. You should kiss me before I remember who I am supposed to be. Victorious, but how long will this peace last? The day already drags like an overloaded ox. Our enemies should be more efficient. 
I do not shy from meaningful combat, but eliminating your boredom is not a worthwhile cause to fight for. If there's no wine, there should be fighting. That's the way of things for a warrior. We should not take much longer to lick our wounds, even if the victory was ours. No doubt the enemy awaits us. <laughs> A good idea. It will allow for some adjustments to the marvelous dragonfly. The landing here was rough. I will ferry whom I can for an initial assault. This is what he has done. This is what your master Lee allowed. For 20 years, my body has bled, separate from the spirit, feeding the Empire and the Emperor. It is an agony that you cannot fathom. To have fallen so far into the hands of men, rebirth is impossible while this continues. By all the heavens. This... this is not right. Gods... gods do not bleed. Forgive us, great dragon. Our mortal kin are ignorant, foolish, unkind. These crimes will not go unanswered. I have never seen such a crime against the proper order of things. Every freedom I cherish is violated by this. You small creatures. You heard the sounds of battle, but are you truly prepared? What will become of your world if my kind fall to the same evils that plague you? Your Master Li must be stopped. The Empire must find balance without the flow of heart water he has unleashed. Water flows from the wound that will not heal in the body that cannot die. Part of me functions as an aspect of our world, elemental in nature. It was never meant to flow free. It is not infinite. The Jade Empire is green, but somewhere another land goes thirsty. All things are linked. Nothing was solved. The problem was merely pushed onto someone else's plate. You are a spirit monk, charged with guarding the order of things. You were not born to this role, but as the last, a solemn duty falls at your feet. I cannot be healed. My body has been cut open. My heart removed. I should rejoin the Great Wheel, but I am defiled and cannot rest. Rebirth can only come when my essence is free. To defeat your master, you must stop the power he draws from me. Soon he will be too strong, even for you. Your master abuses the amulet he took from you. His brother did not have that luxury, so he needed to draw my essence slowly. The toll on his body was grave. Your master does not have to be so cautious. The amulet is not a source of power, but it is a focus. He partakes of energy that mortals were never meant to hold. He laughs at it greedily, expecting your return. You must destroy the source of that power. You must destroy my body. When he falls, all that is mine will then rejoin my spirit. Rebirth. There is no other decision to make. This desecration, we must undo it. A good step toward rectifying this desecration. There was no other reasonable response to such an abomination. Then let it be so. Take hold of a blade, spirit monk, and let it strike true. Destroy the machine that maintains this abomination. The great wheel must turn.
I'm a better teacher than I thought. You must go to the Lotus Assassin Fortress like we agreed. Find the evidence against Death's Hand and I will help you rescue Master Li. I don't understand. You've gained the favor of the Lotus Assassins with a fair amount of ease. What else is there to speak of? Is there something you are wondering? About me? I am Princess Sun Lian, the Heavenly Lily. What more are you worthy of knowing? I do not remember ever being allowed to just be a child. My mother died when I was born, shortly before the end of the long drought and the fall of my uncles. I was in the care of tutors too afraid to punish me and too ingratiating to teach me anything useful. I quickly found ways to sneak away from the palace. They dared not report my excursions for fear they would be punished. They would scurry around all day trying in vain to find me. Yes, it was. I didn't fully understand the risk and made some mistakes. But in the end, what I have become is a result of that. In the city, I met the people. The peasants, the homeless, the thieves. It was a much different world from what you see from the palace. They never realized who I was. I'm sure they would have been terrified of the army storming in to rescue me. Most just wanted to be left alone. That life was exciting, but also useful. Even Lotus Assassins overlook the beggar on the street, but she still has eyes and ears. Ah, the shadow behind my public self. How else can a curious princess learn what really happens in her domain? I don't have time to interpret the veiled statements of advisors, so I became a thief, an assassin, whatever I needed to be. People will not speak to the princess. Bad news kills the messenger first. Silk Fox knows how to persuade. That is how I learned about the activities of Death's Hand. There are many excuses for a vain princess to retreat from sight for days, even weeks at a time. My father encourages such getaways. And if courtiers ever discovered that I was not where I said I would be, who would dare question the Heavenly Lily? I may eschew the formality of it, but being the daughter of the Emperor still has its privileges. It would be very improper for someone of my standing to say anything, unless you make me a little more comfortable. I have already shared something of myself. Can you tell me something about you? Is there anyone that you care for? A 
noble. How romantic. Aloof. Separate by class and breeding. Unattainable for a peasant, normally. Wanting someone you can never have. Love you can never show in public. Such loneliness should not exist. I have contributed to that. The princess behaves as she should, reinforcing the very rules I despise. All to protect Silk Fox. Which one am I? If the freedom you suggest is there, I have never felt it. I have hidden within this costume so I would not have to conform to what others want. It feels more like a retreat than a victory. I can show strength, certainly, but only by hiding my true nature. As princess, I cannot pick and choose what rules of the Empire I follow. Not if I am trying to restore the glory it once had. You tease me with a friendship that has no future. I have many suitors in both of my guises, but you draw me in like no other. How have you done this? Why have you done this? Now you sound like a revolutionary. I no longer know if you speak of personal desires or the fate of the Empire. Perhaps you see them as the same. You asked me to tell you of my first love. Until this moment, it was the Empire. Until this moment. Now I see how I have been a slave to tradition. How I have worked to save an Empire that does not satisfy me. When we take control back from Death's hand, there will be changes. After all, things got this way because of foolish weaknesses. Silk Fox will be getting quite a bit of attention from now on. If I decide that some of it will be yours, you will know. You may regret what you have done here. Do you know what it will take to satisfy me now that what I want is so important? We will have much to discuss once we dispose of Death's Hand. I look forward to a stimulating conversation. My supplies, I'm ruined. Finished. Are you ready yet? The more I think about the information you found, the more I need answers straight from my father. I thank you, but this has been a great deal to absorb. I don't know what to think about anything. We will talk again. This distraction will not last forever. My father must answer to these claims. Then we can deal with more pleasurable topics. Good. My father has much to answer. I was wondering when we'd find time to be alone. Everyone has been hovering about you since you got back. I have hesitated to talk to you. I wanted to be sure of what I would say. To be sure that you are still the person I cared so much about. Do you still feel the same way for your Silk Fox? I haven't been able to sleep since you fell. All I could think of was finding a way to take revenge. So much hate washed over me. It's hard to let that go. Now that you are back, I'm not sure whether to slap you or kiss you. Oh, you never stop. Death is on the wing and you make jokes. Of course, why shouldn't you? Death is tea in the spirit realm for you. I... I am truly frightened about tomorrow. But I know I am safe. Here, in your arms. Whatever comes tomorrow, thank you for what we have, right now. This moment is beautiful. You should kiss me before I remember who I'm supposed to be. I find this matter most unsettling. What? He's a damn good fighter. Better to have him as an ally than an enemy. 
He's not an ally, he's enslaved. He is more useful the way he is. He did a great deal of damage. We could use him to repair it. Can you blame us? There is an unsettling new presence in the group. An odd kind of trophy to collect. Very hard to display without reaction. I do not like what this means, especially for your ability to make it happen. I am also surprised that the princess has not stood up for her relative. Let his spirit rot. It is not as if the honored prince Kin did not earn his fate, much as Sky earned his. I do not like that he is here. It seems cruel, even if he was our enemy. Tools must be respected, but they are still just tools. That could apply to any of us. That is why this is cause for concern. I cannot support this. His spirit should be allowed some peace. I... I can't follow you if you approve of this. I don't care if he goes or stays, but the twisting of a man's soul should not be allowed. Such a thing is not natural. I... won't follow you if this continues. I'd rather face my wife again. Another surprise from your time among the dead. You continue to be an extraordinary person. You would strip away my will? What is my loyalty worth if it is forced? I could suffer the imprisonment of my body, but having my mind taken would be a horror. You know me. This would be unbearable. Won't you listen to reason? If it must be done, come on, let's get this over with so we can get to our next battle. It would seem that the group is again of one mind. Who cares what brings them to the front line, as long as they fight when they get there? What choice do I have? You have taken my will! I will follow you to the ends of the Empire, but it will mean nothing. Pretty little thing, forced to see what it truly takes to attain power in this world. A tragedy I am lucky to witness. I hold more pity than hatred for Death's Hand now. He endured this for 20 years. It might not have been necessary if you had shown proper loyalty. Certain acts may seem unseemly, but we fight a greater evil. A greater tragedy is how you have fallen. If you accept this, what of your beloved Empire? What would become of it when our leader's evil replaces Master Lee's? While I do not wish to take sides in the management of my fellows, I must agree that we need to move forward. A good idea. It will allow for some adjustments to the marvelous dragonfly. The landing here was rough. I will ferry whom I can for an initial assault. Give me a few moments. We will leave at your command when my work is done. I have seen everything that I believe in torn apart one after another. Hopefully it is all over soon. The Empire has suffered at the hands of fools for too long. Wait until they see the new Emperor I am bringing them. Sun Li is a fool. If a member of the royal family is to be enslaved in death's hand, he should at least be incompetent. We will make things right. Tomorrow will bring a new rule. I know it.
Let the heavens try and stop it. I doubt they have that power anymore. For 20 years, a fool has misused a wonderful gift. If the opportunity to make use of that strength is given, I hope you make the right choice for the Empire and us. This is what your Master Lee allowed. For 20 years, my body has bled, separate from the spirit, feeding the Empire and the Emperor. It is an agony that you cannot fathom, to have fallen so far into the hands of men. Rebirth is impossible while this continues. No! By all the heavens. Forgive us, great dragon. Our mortal kin are ignorant, foolish, unkind. These crimes will not go unanswered. Such a clumsy means to power. They had to know this act would be punished. Every freedom I cherish is violated by this. As was commanded, the beast was cut open to sustain the Empire for the good of all. The greatest evil. You small creatures. You heard the sounds of battle, but are you truly prepared? What will become of your world if my kind fall to the same evils that plague you? Your master Lee must be stopped. The Empire must find balance without the flow of hard water he has unleashed. The reign of Emperor Sun saw my abuse, but Sun Li, the glorious strategist, laid the plans. One could not occur without the other. It was never his intent to let Brother High rule. Had his plan initially succeeded, your master would be Emperor, and you would have been destroyed with the others of your kind. It was supposed to be a new era, but even I did not know his true intent. Water flows from the wound that will not heal in the body that cannot die. Part of me functions as an aspect of our world, elemental in nature. It was never meant to flow free. It is not infinite. The Jade Empire is green, but somewhere another land goes thirsty. All things are linked. Their concerns were for the Empire alone. Nothing else mattered. You are a spirit monk, charged with guarding the order of things. You were not born to this role, but as the last, a solemn duty falls at your feet. I cannot be healed. My body has been cut open, my heart removed. I should rejoin the Great Wheel, but I am defiled and cannot rest. Rebirth can only come when my essence is free. To defeat your master, you must stop the power he draws from me. Soon he will be too strong, even for you. Emperor Sun did not have the amulet. He had to draw my essence slowly, or it would overwhelm him. Even so, it took a horrible toll on his body. Your master does not have to be so cautious. The amulet is not a source of power, but it is a focus. He partakes of energy that mortals were never meant to hold. He laughs at it greedily, expecting your return. You must destroy the source of that power. You must destroy my body. When he falls, all that is mine will then rejoin my spirit. Rebirth.
to what end? Look what has become of our master. Look what he has been a part of. Interesting. This power could be used to strengthen the Empire instead of one man. I do not think the mind of a mortal was meant to hold such ability. This is where it begins. A question of similar intent was the start of all our grief. Beware what you say, for you are still mortal and open to the same weaknesses he and his brothers displayed. It seems that you learned your lessons in the spirit realm a little too well. Yes. Blood from your mortal companions could be used to poison my body. The energy flowing to Sun Li would be disrupted, making him vulnerable. Defeat him, and my power would remain trapped in this body, for you to use. You could claim his place, become a god. As the blood poison waned, your power would surpass his and eventually consume my very being. But the water that flows from me now sustains the Empire. If you poison my body, you poison wherever that water flows. You would taint the heart of the Empire. Better than what? Free choice? Yes, a firm hand could shape a great empire. For whom would you make things better? Everyone or just those who pleased you? To make things better, that was our wish. We failed. <laughs> And you have earned that right. I am with you. I do not want to be a part of this. If I were not bound, I would beg you to stop. You are a far greater evil than I imagined. My mistake was ever giving my loyalty in the first place. The horror of this! Please, see the consequences and remember who you are! <laughs> I bleed, though I am sustained by other forces. Withdraw that energy if that is your wish. A part of me yearns for it. I welcome this choice. The mistakes of my family can lead to your victory. It... it is that simple? You can simply order his death and he falls? If you risk the Empire, should you not have to risk yourself? You again show the rewards of loyalty to your cause. Does this amuse you, or is he simply the easiest to abuse? This shell has long been tainted by the misuse of my power. It should be put to rest, not used to further the crime that sustained it. Let me fight for you. There's so much death here, and none yet by my blades. Yes, show me you have the strength to craft an empire. This is what you want? Then the friend I knew is well and truly dead at Master Lee's hand. I have no choice, though I know I will not win. Come. This, I really don't care for. Someone, help! If they fight for me, they will benefit from my influence as you have, Spirit Monk. The heavens guide your hands. Pray it is enough. Long sword.
Now we must go to the throne room. Sun Lee will be waiting. <laughs>